I would like to talk to you today about why I went from being a New Version user to a King James only preacher. You see before me here a lot of the study materials that I read and researched. It took me many years to go through all of these things. And this video is just going to be a very quick uh, kind of overview of all of this different stuff. I'll give you the quick story and then I'm going to go back through and actually cover each different topic. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. I'll cover each different topic in great detail in other videos, okay, because it's, this is going to be way too big to put into one video. I want to try to keep this as short as possible, okay? You go way back to the beginning of, um, I was raised in a new version church, was given a new American Standard Bible for children, and then when I was 10 years old for Christmas, I was given an NIV. And um, I used that up until the time I was 25 years old. So for 25 years, you know, I realized I wasn't reading a Bible as a little baby. But for the first 25 years of my life, I used new versions, went to modern churches with that were saying that the new versions were better than the King James Bible. I was not raised as a Baptist or something like that. I was not. But I came across some videos um, which I have right over here. See if I can get to this. I have to be very careful with my table. It's literally bowing in in the middle with all the weight of everything here. And uh, we know how Boeings like to crash. A uh, little joke there. Sorry if it, that didn't fly with you. A little funny there. <laughs> but um, I was given some videos to watch by my older brother. And one of those was the seminar series by Kent Hovind. And he gets into the thing of um, uh, the Bible version issue or whatever else. I forget if, which one of the seminaries or seminars it was. I think the fifth one or something like that. It was originally on, D on VHS. I have it here on DVD. And that's what introduced me to it. And I didn't stop with Ken Hovind. I went on to read quite a few other things, which I will get he to here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so... My education in this consisted of about 2000 in and well about the year 2000 is when I first heard about this whole thing. Like I said, I was 25 years old. I was born in 1975. So the year 2000 is when I heard about the Bible version issue for the first time. I was reading, reading an NIV. I went and I got my NIV. I looked up these supposed missing verses, found out that they were missing and said, okay, I need to investigate this whole thing further. And that began quite a few years of research. Here we are. 24 years later, and I'm still researching this issue, um, but I am firmly in the camp of being a Bible-believing Christian, Bible-believing, King James Bible believer. Say it that way. Uh, King James only. Yes, I only believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word for English-speaking people. Um, yes, but I understand the bigger implications there. The Bibles that came before the King James Bible, which I have right here, this part of the table, I understand the received text versus the, the Alexandrian. I get it. Okay, I'll talk about that in other videos. But I'm a Bible-believing Christian now. I believe the King James Bible. Right? Um, but it led to study <clears throat> with video. Over here you see VHS tapes. I'll talk about them in a minute. DVDs. Uh, back here, we have to shift some things around. I have cassette tapes. Uh, many hours of cassette tapes. I have um, my own research into some things right there. I'll talk about that in another video. Um, here, this whole big stack here, these are all new versions. And this is just a small part of my collection. I have a lot of the new versions, most of the major new versions in print. I have them, um, <clears throat> including some very rare ones, which I have here. Basically, uh, a lot of the NIVs, I have the very first edition NIV that came out. This is a 1973, officially of, you know, released for sale in 1984, but I actually have a 1983 NIV. I have the NIRV right there. Then I have the TNIV, New Testament, TNIV Whole Bible, today's New International Version. And then I have the 2011 NIV, which is the one that they're currently with, unless I'm mistaken. I have the, an original 1881 revised version. Uh, very few people even have these. Okay, most seminaries don't have these. Bible colleges, pastors especially, do not have these. I actually had uh, Gail Ripplinger contact me at one point in time. I was in, used to be in communication with her. 
and she wanted me to photo scan some pages of this for a book that she was doing. And so this is the real thing. This is the original Westcott and Hort first edition revised version right there. Uh, yes, I have one. I have, this is an American Standard version. I think this is a second edition. It's not a 1901. This one came out after this is the second printing of the American Standard version. Uh, not afraid of these new versions at all. Um, certainly can study and read about different things. The Second Vatican Council here, the Ecumenical Council. I have their quote about working together with separated churches to produce new versions. <laughs> okay, I have um, Greek texts here. These are all Greek texts. Hodges and Farstads, the majority text there. I have the Texas Receptus and Masoretic Hebrew. I have Nestle's 27th, Nestle's 28th, Texas Receptus right here, and the Nestle's 25th that's put out by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Interesting things that are written in there. Um, I have all of these books here, which I'll go over in another video. All of these are in defense of the King James Bible. This is the first one that I actually got and read. Sam Gipps, uh, The Answer Book, right there. I have a collection of books right here. Let's see if I can grab these. Um, collection of books right here. Books that are against the King James Bible, including James White's book. The King James Only Controversy, the first edition, the second edition. I have the King James Version Debate by D.A. Carson right there. I have the NIV Story and the NIV The Making of a Contemporary Translation. I also have a few others in my collection, which I don't have right now out to show. Um, I have uh, back here, I have some uh, different reference works. Uh, White's Dictionary of the King James Language, two volumes there, and uh, Archaic Words in the Authorized Version by Lawrence M. Vance, right here. Um, more of just for reference, they're not really sit down and read the thing cover to cover, it just tells you how to define different words and, and whatever else, some interesting work there. Uh, again, I have down the very bottom of the stack, I'm not going to go through the whole stack here right now, I'll do that in another video, but I have down here at the very bottom of this stack right here, I have the original uh, photo reprint of the 1610 Dewey Reams Bible, the Jesuit Dewey Reams Bible put out for Roman Catholics with all of the notes and everything else. I have the original right down there, four volumes set. Um, here I have the first tome or volume of the paraphrase of Erasmus upon the New Testament, volumes one and two, right there it is. Uh, I have that. I have the Matthews Bible, William Tyndale, Miles Coverdale, and John Rogers, 1537 edition. I have the Geneva Bible, 1560. And I have the Bishop's Bible, three volumes set right there. Uh, I have that one. I have a original 1611 King James New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Photographic reproduction of the 1611 right here. Like that. Can't see it in real great detail because this is just a basic overview. But I have the Bibles that came before the King James Bible. I have a photographic reproduction of the 1611. I also have, let me put these back over here. Take it easy, table, don't break. <laughs> I also have behind me, you can see a little bit of the spine of it, a uh, facsimile edition of the 1611 King James Bible, the facsimile edition of the 1769 King James Bible. The This one here, this old Bible here is from 1840. This one up here is a revised version, authorized version, parallel Bible from the late 1800s. This one up here is an 1860s King James Bible. And then I have a little pocket size uh, King James Bible up there from, that was printed in 1840. So some of these are nearly, uh, no, I'm sorry. This was uh, early 1800s, that one up there. This one's 1840. Some of these are almost 200 years old here. So some of them are newer reproductions, of course, but some of these are almost 200 years old. So the point is I have spent thousands of hours and thousands of dollars over the last uh, 
you know, what was it, uh, 2000, the year 2000, so it's 24. So over the last 24 years, I have spent uh, many thousands of hours on this subject. And <clears throat> I'll show you something else here, um, something else which I just saw, uh, a whole printed, printed articles, lots of printed articles in this thing. I put it, made a three ring binder of all the different articles I printed when I was first studying it. Here's another one, Bible version transparencies. Um, things that I would, that I was bringing out, uh, back many years ago, uh, trying to get right here, Bible version transparencies, and you have the overhead projector and you get these clear pages and you put them on there. And, um, I taught a class, um, at a church I used to go to taught actually quite a few classes on the Bible version issue. And I had men from different seminaries um, that were there, you know, watching it and, and whatever else. And, and I had one come up to me afterwards and say, what I'm doing is very dangerous. So um, I've been around this subject for a long time, 24 years of studying it, 24 years of researching it, defending the King James Bible. And this is my Bible that I've preached from. Look at all my videos. You'll see me preaching almost completely out of this old King James Bible, Cambridge wide margin edition. And uh, I have all my highlighting and notes in the, in the sides and all that other stuff. This one here has been with me for a very long time. This is the one I went out and bought all those years ago. Uh, it would actually have been 2001. I got another King James Bible. And then I heard that the Cambridge were much better than my uh, I think it was, um, Zondervan, you know, Oxford edition or something like that. So I went out and I got a Cambridge King James Bible paid $110 for that thing, which at the time I didn't have much money, but I was, I wanted the word of God and it's uh, best purest form. And so I paid good money for that thing. But, um, all of this to say, none of this is going to be about me bragging. It's all going to be about me showing I am not ignorant of this. I have studied it. I have studied it from both sides for the King James Bible against the King James Bible. All of these new versions comparing scripture with scripture. Oh, and another thing I didn't show. Um, I also came out with my original uh, documentary from NIV to KJV. Then I redid it, made the cover a little bit different. After that, I did one on the ridiculous Bible perversions of the new age another DVD, and then a newer edition of the From NIV to KJV, with more information. And then I did the Real Bible Version issue, issue Exposed. This video has been seen millions of times on different channels all over the internet. Um, it's on a lot of different, it's a couple, it's been mirrored, I don't know how many times on YouTube. It's, it's on Vimeo, it's on uh, a lot of different video platforms. It's been seen by millions of people. So there's that. I also... Here's two uh, ring-bound editions by Dr. Jack Mormon. One on the early church fathers and the authorized version. And there's another one, a uh, closer look at early manuscripts and the authorized version, version right there. Okay, so um, more information defending the King James Bible. I also spent uh, a long time, I think it was a year or two, um, collating the NIV, the TNIV, and the King James Bible, and I'd use a Strong's Concordance, no computer programs, and I would look up key words in the King James Bible and compare them to the NIV and then the Today's New International Version. And I wrote down all of those in 5,000 documented word perversions in the NIV, TNIV. Right there it is. Um, and I used to publish these and I would sell these and like I said, over 20,000 references, and I found 5,000 different times where they perverted the Word of God, the TNIV, NIV. And it's all documented right there, book, chapter, and verse. Um, right there it is. So you can't say, well, you're just uh, you know, uh, regurgitating what you've learned. No, I actually did my own research. And it's ironic because after I came out with this, um, this would have been 2000 oh, I don't know, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, 
maybe 2007. I forget the year I came out with this thing. I don't think I, I didn't have any kind of publication date. I just went right into it. Um, there's no copyright on this or anything else. And uh, But after I came out with this, which just totally destroyed the NIV slash TNIV, they came out with their all new one and said, we're no longer printing the NIV or TNIV. It's now the 2011 NIV. So um, interesting timing on their part. But I did do my own original research. Okay, I did put in all the hours to go through and look up three different Bibles, King James, NIV, TNIV, comparing to Strong's Concordance. And I went down through every single one and counted them out and the whole thing by hand, no computers, and putting it in and let the computer do the work for me, artificial intelligence or some. No, it was my intelligence, not artificial intelligence. There it is. Uh, yes, I have done my homework. And again, like I said, um, hundreds of hours of study and, you know, listening to audio tapes and things. And I'm going to go over all of this in greater detail in the next series of videos, showing you what all I learned over the years, why I went from using a new version to now be, being a King James Bible believing preacher and uh, defending the King James Bible above all others. Okay, so to all the people out there that think that you know everything about me and you say, well, you couldn't possibly study manuscript evidence and textual criticism and come away defending the King James Bible as perfect word of God. That's an ignorant stand to take and whatever. Oh, no, quite on the contrary. You can study the issue from all sides and come away believing the King James Bible is God's perfect book. And that's where I'm at right now. And it wasn't because I was raised that way or I've been indoctrinated into some kind of cult or whatever else. For the record, there's a lot of things I disagree with. Uh, Sam Gipp, I disagree with him. I disagree with uh, Chick Publications on a bunch of areas. And I disagree with Peter Ruckman in a bunch of areas as well. Um, I appreciate and I recognize and appreciate their work that they did defending God's book. Um, I highly respect all of those men for doing that. Um, but I'm not into their cult or some other thing and I don't question them or whatever else. That's not true. Not true at all. So... Um, I'm going to end this video here and uh, I'm going to start doing a, you know, each section of this. I'll have one showing some of my historical documents, showing the books against, the books for the King James Bible. I'll show some of these new versions. I'm going to show a lot of the videos that I've watched, so the videos that I've recorded. I'll give links to the ones that are available on YouTube. I'll show you some of my work. I'll show you stuff about the Greek texts. I'll show you a lot of this stuff. But uh, I can't do it in this video, like I said, for sake of time. And also, I don't think my table is going to last much longer if I uh, put my weight on it here. <laughs> so um, you can look at all this stuff. And you know, to conclude this little short intro here, you can look at all this and you can just kind of slump your shoulders and think, oh, you mean to tell me in order for me to have a really close relationship to the Lord and a belief in his word, I'm going to have to spend all thousands of hours and thousands of dollars on all the stuff that brother Brian has. And we're going to have to take years, 24 years of studying this issue. Ugh, are you kidding me? Um, no, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can listen to a man that has been through it and then has argued back and forth with new version guys and whatever else. Um, and you can take my advice. And say, at the end of the day, after all this stuff, if I had to choose between studying all this to, you know, reassure my faith that the King James Bible is God's book, or just believe this book by faith. Um, believe the book by faith. Read it like it's God's book. Apply it to your life and you'll see this is no ordinary book right here. This King James Bible is God's word. And you don't need all of this stuff to prove that. Now, I did read all of this stuff here to prove it and listen and watch and all the other things. I did the research, 24 years of research into this issue, and I'm still a hardcore Bible believer. In fact, as I study it more, it convinces me more that the King James Bible is God's perfect word, not less. So uh, it comes down to that issue. If you believe that there is a perfect word of God out there and you say, Lord, show it to me and you speak English, God's going to lead you to this book. God won't lead you to this mess right here in this big pile here. He won't lead you to that. 
But if you say, well, I don't know, I, I have questions and I'm not really sure if I want to believe that there's a perfect book out there because that would mean, you know, I, there'd be a perfect standard that I'd have to live by and, you know, the whole thing. And I, it, would, it would put me at odds with a lot of my friends and things, a lot of my Christian friends and, you know, my church, we don't really take a strong stand. So it might be militant. I might get kicked out. And yeah, then you can deny a lot of this that I have here and you can go with your new versions and you can go with your new version defenders down here and they will give you the uh, philosophical arguments that you need to reject this massive amount of truth or you can just say well you know no thank you I'm going to believe the King James Bible so that's going to be it for this video and uh, we'll see in the next couple of videos I'm going to go into a lot more of this stuff in greater detail thank you for watching